Hello, my name is Daniel Contreras and I am a chemistry student at Georgia Gwinnett College. Today, I'll be talking about the metalloenzyme alcohol dehydrogenase and its zinc 2 plus cofactor. Alcohol dehydrogenase is the metalloenzyme responsible for breaking down the alcohol in your system after having a few drinks. The mammalian form of ADH resides mostly in the liver which makes sense when you consider that the liver takes most of the damage from the long-term drinking habits. It's able to achieve this breakdown by the use of its zinc 2 plus and NAD plus cofactors. The presence of the zinc 2 plus is what classifies this as a metalloenzyme, and without it, the reaction would not be able to proceed. In this video, I hope to discuss with you the history, significance, structure, function, properties, and future direction of this extremely beneficial molecule. But before we get into all of that, let's start with the history behind our understanding of it. This biological molecule has been studied for over 100 years and still continues to be studied to this day. It's very well known for its ability to break down ethanol, which is the type of alcohol we consume in beverages. This is important because ADH is the enzyme responsible for the effects we feel after having one too many drinks. It was first discovered around 1910 by Federico Batelli and Lisa Stern. They did this by being the first to create a method to prep a soluble ADH from horse liver. From here, many further discoveries have been made. In 1934, Ben Anderson discovered the need for NAD+, while in 1937, Erwin Negelin and Hans Wolff were able to crystallize ADH from brewer's yeast. Roger Bonnickson and Anderson Waas crystallized the first mammalian ADH from a horse liver in 1948. In the same year, Bert Valley and Frederick Hawk discovered zinc as the metal responsible for the functionality of the enzyme. By 1981, Jornval and Associates were able to classify ADH as either type 1 or type 2 based on the length of the chains. Six years later, the third type of ADH was reported, which are those that live in microorganisms and contain iron. It wasn't until 2002 when Yingfeng Dang and others were able to clone a gene which was responsible for encoding a type 3 ADH in humans, proving that type 3 ADH does not only exist in microorganisms. This enzyme has clearly had a deep and well understood history, but how does it work? The form of alcohol that we can safely consume is ethanol. It's first introduced into your system upon consumption of an alcoholic beverage. It makes its way through the small intestine and into the liver. And that's where most of the ADH resides. The breakdown begins when the hydroxyl group of the alcohol binds with the zinc ion inside the enzyme. This carefully positions the ethanol near the NAD plus cofactor. This is important because the NAD plus acts as an oxidizing agent, meaning it accepts electrons from the ethanol. The NAD plus is reduced to NADH and the ethanol is converted into acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde is more toxic to us than alcohol is. Thankfully, there's a similar enzyme called aldehyde hydrogenase, and that breaks it down into acetate. Acetate's a non-toxic molecule that can be used elsewhere in our bodies. As you may know, alcohol is technically toxic to humans and ADH is what protects us from its toxic effects. That's the whole purpose of the metabolic process in the first place. ADH exists in high enough levels in the liver to detoxify roughly one standard drink per hour, or roughly 14 grams of pure ethanol. This is why they recommend that we pace ourselves between drinks. That way the enzyme has its time to do its job effectively, keeping you from becoming intoxicated. Consume any more than that and the effects associated begin to occur. Now, ADH is not only formed in humans. As stated before, it's also found in other organisms. The image you see before you is a three-dimensional structure of a yeast ADH. The main difference is that it's composed of four subunits and is considered a tetramer. Back on one of the first slides, I showed you the human ADH molecule that has two subunits and is considered a dimer. Interestingly enough, the ADH in yeasts and other bacteria actually create the ethanol we consume in our beverages. It works similarly as the mammalian version in that the ADH breaks down the sugars it needs for energy, producing acetaldehyde, which is then further reduced into liquid ethanol byproduct. The production and destruction of ethanol is controlled by the same enzyme, just in different forms. Now, it may seem that ADH has no real issues. However, that isn't the case. One of its major flaws is in its ability to distinguish between other types of alcohols and molecules, such as methanol, propanol, retinol, steroids, etc. Because it lacks this distinction, other types of alcohols can be broken down in the liver, and this can create harmful byproducts that our body is unable to process. For example, 
The metabolism of methanol produces formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is an extremely toxic molecule that can lead to a permanent loss in vision in small doses, and at higher doses can even kill you. As I've said before, ADH is a metalloenzyme, and the metal responsible for that classification is zinc. It has an atomic number of 30 and an electron configuration of AR4S2-3D10. In this enzyme, it exists in a tetrahedral geometry and is bound to two cysteines and a histidine. Its main purpose is to bind with the alcohol, placing it in the open space between it and the NAD. If you look carefully at the model I have shown here, you can see each of these key components. The white molecule in the center represents zinc, the two yellow ones represent the cysteine molecules, the purple is the histidine, and the red is the NAD. The zinc 2 plus ion that is present in the enzyme is missing two electrons, more specifically the S electrons. Therefore, the new electron configuration would be defined as AR4S0 3D10. This happens as the result of transition metals residing in a lower energy state while the d orbitals are filled. Because it is only a 2 plus ion, there are no electrons removed from the d orbitals, indicating that the zinc is diamagnetic, which just means that it produces its own magnetic field in opposing directions and is also weakly repelled by other magnetic fields. Because there are no unpaired d electrons, the spin state and magnetic moment are both calculated at zero, and it does not exist in high or low spin. The ligand field stabilization energy cannot be calculated either because of the fact that it does not exist in either spin state. Alcohol dehydrogenase is an extremely beneficial enzyme that predominantly resides in our liver. In yeast, it creates the ethanol we consume and in us, it breaks it down. Even though we have a deep understanding of its structure and function, there are still many studies being conducted in regards to this enzyme. In the past 20 years, there has been research done by a man named Howard Edinburgh, which attempts to analyze the genetic contributions of encoding ADH variants in people with alcohol use disorders. In 2018, he and Jeanette McClintock claimed that the likely mechanism against alcohol use disorders and binge drinking are from the change in the ethanol metabolism rate, which increases acetaldehyde production. This correlates with the previous study that Edinburgh performed in 2007, in which he showed that specific allele variants could encode more active or inactive enzymes. This just means that if someone has a more active ADH enzyme in their liver, the alcohol can be processed quicker, making intoxication harder to achieve. This may play a role in someone with a reduced likelihood of becoming alcoholic. What these studies have yet to discover, however, are the exact implications and the effects of population variation on the influence alcohol metabolism may have on the risk of alcoholism. Further understanding of the types of ADH in high-risk individuals could lead to beneficial knowledge of how the drug metabolism may indicate potential drug addiction. This combination of chemistry, biology, and psychology could revolutionize the drug treatment and prevention options available today. That concludes my presentation on this magnificent enzyme. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.